Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 Live. My name is Brad Tallis. Um, also with me on the keyboards is my buddy Angelo. So if you have any questions as we're going through this live stream, please feel free to uh, post them into the chat. And uh, we always read those, we always look through them if there's any comments or anything like that. So um, today we're gonna um, continue where we left off. Um, last week we left off creating this part um, that you see on the screen and today we're going to work on this part here this kind of goes up inside the the pencil sharpener um, I'm going to show a couple different methods um, last week we used the revolve command to basically revolve a profile um, this week and I mentioned um, there's another method which we call the layered cake method and so that's what I'm going to be showing today um, also, the uh, outline that I usually create and the drawing uh, for the session today is in the description of the video, so please feel free to download those. Uh, so let's dive right in. Um, so I'm going to be using uh, this drawing here to create uh, this particular part, and so you might see me jump back and forth a little bit, but everything I'm typing in, I'm getting off of this drawing. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to create a new component. And you've noticed we've been creating all of these um, individual parts as separate components. So we're going to continue with that method. So I'm going to right mouse click at the top level and say new component. I'll go ahead and give it a name. And I couldn't think of a good name for this part. So I went unoriginal and I'm just going to call it part four. I don't know what it's actually called in the real world. So we're going to call it part four. And you'll see that now um, my part four component is active. And like I mentioned before, we're going to create what I'll call the, the layered cake method. And I'll show you some pros and cons with both of these methods, the revolve and the layered cake. The reason I kind of like the layered cake method is because I think it's pretty fast. Uh, so check this out. I'm going to use a cylinder primitive. Okay, so not even creating a sketch. So I'm going to say cylinder. And you'll see that it's asking, you know, which plane to create the cylinder on. Well, it's actually going to start and sit on this face right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that face. Now it's asking for a center point. So I'm going to go ahead and click the, uh, the center point here and start to drag. Okay. Now I'm going to, I want to use my existing geometry to help me with my design. So I'm just going to move over and it's going to snap to that edge right there. And now you'll notice I'm going to go ahead and drag so you can kind of see what's going on here. It's creating a cylinder for me. And I can specify the overall height. Uh, that's what this field is right here. So according to the drawing, the height is 0.25. And I'll go ahead and say OK. Now, let me turn off this gear housing so you can kind of see what we did. So it basically created a circle and extruded that up um, 0.25 tall. OK. Then I can repeat that. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag straight up. I can click on this top face. So we're now putting a new layer of cake onto this cylinder here. So we're going to click on that top face. I'll go ahead and click that center point. And this next diameter is going to be 1.35. I'll hit enter. And then you can see by default it just puts in some, some height in there and I can say I want this to be 0.35 so you can kind of see how we've layered uh, another layer of cake onto here also notice the operation says join so we're in our part 4 component and we only have one body when I say OK this is all going to be one body so I'll repeat that again I'm just going to right click and drag straight up to repeat my last command it's asking where do I want to create the cylinder. All I have to do is hover over that top face and click on it. Grab that center point and this one is going to be 
with a height of um, 0.53. So we can kind of see what that looks like. And again, I'm basically, you can see all of these dimensions right here. So here's the diameter dimensions I'm using. And then here's the heights that I'm using along this side on the drawing. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, repeat my last command. So I'm just adding more and more layers of cake basically. So this one 1.25 um, with a height of 1.7. So this one's the kind of the taller region. So I'll zoom out just a little bit. And then finally I'll do one more where I'll go ahead and click and say uh, 1.13 with a height of 0.5. Okay, and we actually are done with the basic design. And, and you know, with me talking, it took a little bit longer, but think about how quickly we were able to create this profile. If I were to have done it as a sketch, I would have had to you know, draw a bunch of lines hoping that they're horizontal and vertical, making sure that they're constrained the right direction and all that kind of stuff. I would have had to done diameter dimensions for all of those and do, do the heights. So both methods would work. Uh, I kind of like this method um, just because I think it's kind of speeds up the process. Now you'll notice in my timeline I have a bunch of cylinder primitives and you know I they're okay to see them here but I kind of want to not see them so I'm gonna grab all of them right mouse click and there's an option in here called create group and what this allows you to do is basically take a bunch of features and group them together into one so you'll see my timeline is now just basically one icon but if I hover over that I can see all of the stuff that's inside that group. I can also expand that open if I want to or minimize it. So it's kind of a cool way to sort of clean up your um, timeline. If you have a lot of similar features like moves or fillets or something like that, you can group them together. Okay, now eventually this thing is gonna get um, hollowed out or shelled but there's a hole that kind of goes through the top. So I'm gonna create a hole. So I'll use the hole command. Click on this top face. I just randomly clicked and now you can see I can move by grabbing that blue dot, I can move it around and you'll notice there's another dot kind of in the middle of the cylindrical feature. So I'm just gonna get near there and it's gonna snap to that center point automatically for me. Okay. Now it gives me kind of a preview of what that's going to look like. Um, I want this to be a drill point flat. I want it to be flat. So I'll go ahead and set that. I want it to be a simple hole. Um, I don't need it to be tapped or anything like that. And I want the bottom of it to be flat. I want the diameter of it um, according to the drawing to be 0.325 and the depth of it to be 0.4 and I'll go ahead and say okay and we just created a hole right there and again here's the the depth 0.4 and you can see I also dimensioned it there here 0.325 with a depth of 0.4 Okay, so I pretty much have the design the way I want. Now is probably the time I should go ahead and shell this thing out. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this bottom face, right mouse click, and say shell. Now what I like to do is I like to start to drag to visually see what that's gonna look like. And now you can kinda of see why we did the whole to start out with because it's going to create this little standoff for me. But I also want to be able to see through that hole. So instead of just selecting the bottom face, I'm going to come in and also select this inside flat face right here. And now you can see that we're looking through the model. So it's shelling all the way through. You can have more 
than one face to open up when you're doing your shell. Now for the thickness, according to the drawing, it's supposed to be 0 0.08. And you can kind of see how that updated. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And we want it to shell to the inside. And so now we, we kind of have the basic shape, even wall thickness all the way through. So what I want to do now is I want to start working on this kind of this curved section where the pencil actually goes in. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, and I'm going to show you a neat little tip. I've shown this before, but I, I really think it's helpful for keeping your timeline nice and simple. I'm kind of working on one region and I'm going to add a couple fillets, actually three fillets. So I'm going to select this edge here right mouse click and say fill it. Now it's asking for a size so in this case I want to do 0 0.08 and I get a nice preview of what that's going to look like. Well I also want to fill it this edge right here. If I were to say OK right now I'd have my fill it feature and then I'd come in here and I would do another fillet feature, right? I'd come in and specify the size for that, okay? And if I said okay, then I start getting a bunch of fillet features in my timeline. So I'm gonna undo, okay? Instead, I'll come in here and say fillet. We'll do the point, point zero 0.08. Then I can come over here and add another fillet feature. So if I just hit this little plus symbol, it's allowing me to select another edge or face or feature. I'm going to go ahead and select that edge. And this one's supposed to be 0.2 for the radius. And now you'll notice that it's doing both the 0 0.08 and it's doing the 0.2 at the same time. I also want to fill it this edge in here that kind of has to do with the top of the part. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the add new selection again. Click on this inside edge right here. I'll go ahead and start dragging so you can kind of see what that's going to do. Okay. And I can specify the size for that. It's supposed to be 0.1. It gives me a nice preview of what that's going to look like. And if I rotate around, you'll see that we're doing basically three fillets all in one fillet feature. Okay, so I'll say OK, and there we go. There's my one fillet feature, but it's actually dealing with three separate fillets. Now, um, I really like this method, uh, but you kind of have to remember. You know, you don't see a whole bunch of fillets in your timeline, but you see a whole bunch of fillets on your part. You kind of have to know that, okay, I'm going to do most of the fillets in the same area. Like maybe all the outside fillets or maybe just this top area. I'm using the, the single fillet feature with multiple selections. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're doing this. Okay, so we worked on the top. I also want to fillet these edges here. And in this case, I am going to do these as a separate fillet feature. So I'll just come in here and say fillet, click on these, and these are fairly small, 0.025. I'll go ahead and control click because all of these are the exact same size. So you can see I now have three edges at 0 0.025 inches. Okay, so now I'm starting to get the major design. The next thing I want to do is put these um, elliptical holes that kind of go through the part. Okay, so we're going to use the ellipse command to do that. But to do that, I need to, um, you know, create a sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch, and I'll probably just do it on this front plane right here, because that goes right through the center of the part. Okay, so I'm going to click on this front plane. Now the ellipse command requires um, you to locate like the center point and I want to make sure I'm centered in this area right here so I'm going to start by 
creating a line. Now you'll notice as I hover over, it's not capturing you know, the corners or anything like that. So first of all, I need to project some geometry. So P for project. The P is the shortcut key, or you could come here, create, project, project. Okay. And I could do a single face, or I could do the whole body. So again, kind of as review, you have two options. You have specified entities or the body. So if I say specified entities, it's going to let me just pick an individual area. Okay, you can kind of see it as it's highlighting. But if I say bodies, you'll see it kind of highlights the whole body. And it pretty much creates, I'll just hit OK and turn off the body. You can kind of see how it basically does like a silhouette all the way around. So I like to use that project body if all I really care about is, you know, the, the major parts of the geometry. Now you'll notice it's snapping to this object line, it's snapping to the corners, all that kind of stuff. So now my geometry, for example, right here, it's catching to the center, and I'll come up there, catch to the center there. I now have a center line. In fact, I don't want it to be an object line, I'll change it to construction like we've done previously. Okay, so now I have something to draw on. I'll come in here and use the ellipse command. And you'll notice next to my cursor it says place the center point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get near this line and I can be anywhere on this line, it doesn't matter. So I'll just go ahead and click like right here for example and then it's asking for like a width and a height. So basically asking for two axes. So I'm just going to go ahead and click somewhere like so and somewhere like so. Okay. So I now have this ellipse. I'll go ahead and zoom up here just a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Then I'm going to come in and start to dimension this. Again, according to the drawing, um, this ellipse is 0.65 wide by 1.4 tall, okay? So I'll throw in a dimension on this little construction line that the ellipse created for me automatically. So that is supposed to be 0.65. I was actually fairly close. And you'll see it kind of updated. And then I can click on this construction line. I'll go ahead and place it there. And that is supposed to be 1.4, 1.4. And you can see how the shape of the ellipse has updated. Okay, the last thing I want to do, I'm not sure why my let me transfer back and come back. Okay, um, last thing I want to do is position where on this line the rectangle, I'm sorry, the, the ellipse needs to be. So I'll go ahead and click that center point, and I'm just going to reference it off this top edge right here. I'll go ahead, let's just do that, and that is supposed to be 0.75. And we'll see, sure enough, the uh, object line has changed color, which means it's fully constrained. And I'm ready to go. So I'm going to say finish sketch. And now that I have my profile, I'm going to use this to cut away basically an elliptical hole. But you'll notice that my sketch is inside my part because I used that front plane and if I hover over it doesn't let me click on the profile okay so what I see a lot of people do is they'll come over and they'll turn off turn off the body then they can click on it then they'll turn back the body back on which you can absolutely do but it's moving the mouse around quite a bit so if you just hover over, click and hold for about a second, you will get the ability to probe through. And so you can see it's going to click that front face, then it's going to click that inside face, and then finally it's going to get to the profile. Okay, so it's really, really fast. I can just click and hold and say there's my profile instead of having to come over here and turn parts on and off. I'll right mouse click, it shows me the commands that make sense. So I'll say extrude. 
Now I'm going to start dragging in this direction so you kind of see what's going to happen here. We're going to extrude and it's basically going to cut through the wall. Okay. Now I want to go a specific distance and I don't know how far that is. So like I've shown in previous live streams, instead of saying distance, I can say to object. I'll go ahead and say to object. I'm going to click on this outside face and Fusion will figure out what it needs to do to cut that region out. And if this cylinder were to ever change size, like if I came back and modified the drawing, or the sketch I should say, um, because we said two object, it's always going to cut to the outside surface no matter what diameter it is. So I really do recommend that you say two object. Now you'll notice I'm only going in one direction. I could go both directions, but I'm going to show the pattern command and you could pattern just two instead of four, but to me there's four holes and so in my pattern I kind of want to see four as the quantity, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave one hole cut out. I'll say OK. And we now have that cut out of there. Um, so the other thing with pattern is you can pattern multiple things. So I want to have a fillet on this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that fillet first. And you'll see why here in just a second. But I'll select that edge and say fillet. And this is a pretty small fillet, 0.02. You can see how it kind of wraps around that whole edge. And I'll say OK. Now, of course, I want to pattern this. So we'll say create pattern, circular pattern. Now, by default, it comes up as faces. Now you could select you know, all of those faces and pattern them if you want to, but I much, much rather change it to features. And I can pick the extrude feature and I can pick the fillet feature at the same time. And this is what I was talking about just a moment ago where you know, when you create a pattern, you can select multiple features. So we're going to do the hole and the fillet at the same time. What's my axis? I just have to click. I could click any of these cylindrical faces. Me personally, I'm kind of revolving it around this face. So I'm kind of selecting that face. It gives me a preview. There's a quantity of three. I'll change that to four and say OK. And we now have those four elliptical cuts out of the part. And you can see why I did the fillet first, because if I didn't, in fact, let me go ahead and suppress this, um, <laughs> I would have to fillet that edge, and I'd have to fillet the other edge, and have to, you know, I'd have to select multiple edges um, to fillet, whereas I just did one, and it's going to pattern that fillet all the way around. Okay, so we've actually got quite a bit of, of the design done already. We've kind of done the top part. We're going to get to these little uh, clamp things in just a second. The next thing I want to work on are these little standoffs that are on the bottom of the part. You can kind of see what those look like. Okay, and those line up with the gear housing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the gear housing. I'm going to turn off this part. And remember last week when we were working on this, none of the holes were exactly 90 degrees. They were oddly spaced and all that kind of stuff. Well, those standoffs fit into these holes and get screwed into place. So I obviously want to use this information to help me with my design. So what I'm going to do, I'll turn both of these parts on. You can kind of see what that looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off, uh, on the gear housing, I'm going to turn off part four. Okay. This is kind of a cool trick. Check this out. I'm going to zoom up. I'm just going to go ahead and select these faces off of 
a totally different component. Okay, so I'm going to grab these guys, right mouse click, and say extrude. Now, as I start to extrude, you'll notice I get a warning saying the object that you're creating is not visible. Well, that's because part four is our active component. This is the part I'm working on. However, I've turned on gear housing. Okay, so that's why I'm getting that warning and I'm not seeing any preview here. But as soon as I turn on part four, you'll see I'm getting some feedback now. In fact, let me turn off this gear housing. And it's using oops, that um, information. Yeah, grab this arrow here. Darn it. Uh, too many clicks. Let me uh, change the distance. Let's just go 0.25. And see if that'll let me drag it. No, nope. okay. Anyways, <laughs> I don't. I don't care about how far that is. I want to go to a very specific distance. So I'm going to change this from distance to object. Once again, I'm going to say I want it to extrude to that face. So it's grabbing the information from the gear housing. I'm grabbing those faces from the gear housing. We're extruding that up. Now I don't want it to cut, I want to join. And just like that, we have these four standoffs. Okay, and I'm joining them to my active component, which is part four. I'll say okay, and they're perfectly lined up. So for example, if I were to come in here and Let's just turn, let's create a uh, quick um, section analysis, like so. I'm just going to kind of slice through, and you'll see that those fit right inside of the holes. Now, I see a little bit of an issue we're going to fix here in just a second, but you can kind of see how that standoff is perfectly lined up in those holes. I'll go ahead and say OK. I'll turn off my analysis here real quick. OK, so what was the issue that I noticed? Well, if I rotate this over and take a look, you can kind of see, I'll zoom up on, on this one here. This was the shape that we extruded, and we told it to extrude to this face. So it basically covered up the, um, this area here, and I see some extra faces in here that I don't want you know, that the screws would run into. So I'm going to just go ahead and select those faces. In fact, I'll do that on all four. So I'm just doing my control key. Let me zoom up to, to control my selection. I'll zoom up again like so. And let's just take a look at this guy and grab those guys. Okay, so I've selected all of those areas and now I can right mouse click and say delete or I can hit the delete key on my keyboard. And you'll notice that we just deleted that extra geometry that was in there. So we were able to reuse existing geometry. It worked pretty good, but it left a little bit of extra material. So we were able to use the delete key to remove that material. And in fact, I think now if we turn on the, uh, the analysis, let's turn on those two parts we can see a much better result. Okay. Cool. Okay. So the next thing I want to focus on, we've done, we've done these little standoffs right here. Um, I want to create these little guys. And what that is, is basically this top part, which we're going to work on next rotates and kind of gets held in by those um, those little slots there. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's mostly horizontal. And then there's a slight angle on it to help guide this cap on and then lock into place. So that's what we're going to do next. And we're going to use our ever popular emboss command to do this because it totally makes sense we basically have to wrap a shape around this surface here. 
and I want to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm going to create a sketch and instead of burying the sketch right in the middle of the part, I'm going to go ahead and create an offset plane from this basically this front face. And I'm just going to drag it to the left so you can kind of see it's floating in front of our part. So I don't care what the distance is, I'm just creating a plane that's in front of this part. Now I can use that plane to create a sketch. Okay. On the drawing over here in the corner, I just created a simple um, line drawing of what we're going to be creating. And then we're going to offset that to give us the thickness. And then we'll use that to emboss. Okay, so I'm using these dimensions to, uh, to create a quick sketch here. So I'll just do a line straight up um, 0.34 and then I'll do a line straight over that's a 0.5 and then I'll do a line here that's 0.1 in length. Let me kind of zoom up so you can kind of see what's going on here. And then I want the angle to be 5. Okay, so you can kind of see that that line is 0.1 in length at the angle of 5. Let me move this guy here so it kind of cleans things up a little bit. Now I want to give it some some thickness. So I'll just use the offset command. Click on this profile and you'll notice because chain selection is turned on, it's selecting that whole thing. But I want it to go to the inside, so I'm going to drag this direction, and I can see that's in the negative direction. So I'm going to say minus 0 0.07. That's how wide the, this is. And I'll say OK. However, by using the offset command, it doesn't close my profile. So this is not a valid profile. So I'll just add a couple extra lines, one there and then one from this corner to that corner and now we can see that that is shaded in. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time trying different methods. Um, I know I've shown the emboss command a couple times recently and and uh, I was like, well can I just do like projected geometry? Could I create one of these and then mirror it to the other side? And believe it or not, none of that worked. Um, mirror, it, it did put it on the other side, but it didn't create a revolution of it. It was just an exact mirror copy, and I want basically a revolution of it. Um, so emboss was the command that kind of made sense. But you'll notice if I put this here, it's going to emboss it on the front. I wasn't able to emboss it onto the back. I think once the face got embossed, it didn't let me re-emboss a new one onto it. So I was like, well, I need to have one of these on the front and I need to have one of these, I'll kind of rotate around here, on the back also. So what I ended up doing was basically creating two of these guys. And to do that, I'm just gonna come in here and do a selection box around it, control C for copy, Control V for paste. Okay, and what that'll let me do, oops, let me do that again, sorry. Control C and then Control V. Sorry, I didn't hit Control V. So you'll notice when I hit Control V, it comes up with this move copy, and then I get the these arrows here. So I'm just gonna drag to the right. Let me kind of zoom just a little bit. Now how far? I don't know. We're gonna get to that here in just a moment. But you can see that we're creating a copy of this sketch. I'll go ahead and say OK. And there we go. OK, so we're going to have this guy be right here. I want this guy to be exactly on the other side. So how do we do that? Well, basically with the emboss, I can have it wrap all the way around. So I just need to know the circumference of this cylinder. 
So the first thing I did was I said inspect, and notice I'm still in my sketch, which is kind of cool. I can take measurements of the 3D geometry while I'm still in my sketch. So the first thing I did was I clicked on this face, okay? And it gives me a radius, and it gives me a diameter, and a loop length, and the area, but I don't see a circumference measurement. Okay, now I could do the math, but obviously I don't want to do that because I'd probably mess it up. So I'm going to restart my selection and instead of selecting this face, I'm going to select this edge. And notice now we get a length. In fact, I'm going to rotate 3D. So the length of this edge is if you were to take a piece of string and start, you know, like where this one is, for example, and you were to wrap that piece of string all the way around and come back to here, and then you laid that out flat, that's the length of that edge. So that's the circumference. Okay. Now you'll notice if I hover over it, it says click to copy to clipboard. You most definitely want to do that because right now it's only showing two decimal places, but this could be 3.55111 or, you know, it could have multiple decimal places after that and clicking it into the clipboard will grab all of those numbers. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and say close. Okay, so I now know the circumference. Let's create a dimension from this corner here to this corner here. I'm going to go ahead and place that and say paste control V and there you notice it took that number and it's putting it in that dimension. If I hit enter, it's going to move that all the way over 3.55. Now, this is wrong, right? I don't want it to go the whole length because that would basically put this copy right on top of that. I want to edit this dimension and say I want half of that. So I'm going to say 3.55 divided by 2. And I'll hit enter and you'll see that it figures out what it needs to do and it moves this second sketch the second profile I should say the correct distance okay so it took the circumference we divided it by two so it's gonna put one on the front and one on the back okay the next thing I want to do is I like to you don't have to but I like to position these kinda of where they need to be so I'm going to First of all, say I want um, this line here to be collinear with this line here. I want them to stay at the same height. I don't want that to change. And then I also want this corner to be at the midpoint of this line over here. Now you'll notice I don't have a line. Okay, so I'm going to project but instead of doing the whole body this time, all I really care about is that line. So this is where I'm going to come back to that selection filter. I'm just going to click on that line. And all it did was project that one line. Okay, so now I can say midpoint. I want that corner to be at the middle of this line. And you can see, sure enough, that's what it did. And I can see that all of my lines turn black. I know that this is a fully constrained sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. Now if we rotate, you'll notice it's floating out in space. And that's totally fine. So let's do the emboss. What are my sketch profiles? Notice that it's plural. So I can say that guy and that guy. What are my faces? that one there. Now you'll notice when I clicked on that face I get an error message. The selected faces are not connected and all this kind of stuff. I'm going, whoa, what does that mean? But I also notice I clicked on this face and I see this top face is blue. Now why is that? Well, tangent chain is turned on and so what it's basically saying is select that face and if there's any faces tangent to it, select it, which there is, there's this fillet, 
Is there any faces tangent to that? Yep, this flat face. And you can kind of see it's kind of wrapping around this whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck faces and I'm going to uncheck tangent chain. And I'm going to reselect that face and instantly you can see our preview. And you can see how that's exactly on the other side and it's going in the correct direction. So again, imagine if I had mirrored this feature, it would be on the other side, but the arm would face to the right. And it's kind of hard to, to show that, but this is where emboss really is pretty darn cool. Okay. Now, I also don't know what the depth is supposed to be. And if I zoom up, I can kind of see that this is hanging off of this fillet a little bit. And so if I were to grab this depth arrow, you can kind of see I can change the size of that. Well, I want it to go basically to the edge of this fillet. So I'm just going to click on that fillet and you'll see it figures out what that distance needs to be and it extrudes to the edge of that fillet. Or I should say it embosses to the edge of that fillet. Notice the faces are going the correct direction. It's a really cool tool. I'll go ahead and say OK. So using the emboss command, we were able to create kind of this complex geometry. And remember my sketch? I kept it pretty simple. So you know, I, I used the offset command, but all I really did, whoops, let me pan so you can kind of see, all I really did was draw this line, this line, and that line to kind of define the shape of it. Then we used the offset and then figured out the circumference and divided that by two. And if I were to double click on this dimension, it remembers that formula for me. So I can always come back and say, how did I get 1.775? Okay. So the next thing I want to do is kind of round over these edges. Well, there's a lot of edges here. And I can't do my fillets before the emboss because the emboss is creating the geometry. So I showed this last week. Under the fillet command, you have two different types. You have fillet and you have rule fillet. And this is actually a pretty powerful command that's kind of underutilized. So I'm going to say rule fillet. Okay. I want it to fillet all of the edges of which faces or which features. Well, I can just click on the emboss feature and you can see it selected everything about the emboss feature. Do I want it to do rounds, which I showed last week are kind of like these rounded corners? Or do I want it to do fillets, which is kind of like where this edge connects that face, it kind of smooths it out? Or do I want to do both, rounds and fillets? And see if they can calculate at the same time. So let's just do a pretty small radius here, 0 0.01. And sure enough, you can see it did both of those all at the same time. So here are the rounds right here. You can kind of see the rounds. And then here are the fillets over here. OK. So just like that, using the rule fillet, I selected all of those edges and didn't have to manually select them or do a selection window or anything like that. OK. The last thing, and it's kind of hard to see, but inside there is like an internal gear. Um, because in the design, this is the actual pencil sharpener part. You can see that there's a little gear right here, and it rotates up inside of, of this guy. So that's what spins it around and turns the blade. And I'll be honest, this was, the I think, the toughest part of you know, how do we do this? Um, so I don't know if the solution I'm going to show you is the best example, but I wanted to show this because instead of us doing all the hard work, we're going to let Fusion do the hard work for us. Okay, So I want to be able to create a gear, and I could draw one tooth and revolve it around and spend a lot of time creating that complex profile, but instead I'm going to use a plug-in. 
So what do I mean by that? Well, under the tools, you'll notice we have this add-ins and we have scripts and add-ins, okay? So what I did is I went out to the Fusion 360 App Store and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and show you what's gonna happen. Of course, it came up on another monitor, so I'll bring it over here. And we have a bunch of apps out here that um, people can write. We have an open API and so people have written a ton of apps that can be plugged in. So for example, a helical gear generator, um, a Veroni sketch generator, you know, a sketch checker, which I actually have used in some of my live streams. Um, so I'm going to come in here and just type in gear and hit enter. And we can see it came up with four different results. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Okay, and I noticed right here it says for an add-in for creating spur internal and rack gears. Okay, so I'm going to, I need to basically create an internal gear. So to add this to Fusion, all I have to do is click on it. Okay, now I'm going to point out a couple things here. Um, some of these, now this one only says Windows 64, so I'll, I'll pick a different one, but you need to make sure that you pick which operating system. So let's try this helical gear generator. So yeah, so notice how this one says Mac OS and Windows 64. So sometimes by default, Mac OS is selected. And if I were to hit download, it's gonna download a, a Mac version even though I'm on a PC. So definitely make sure you click on the operating system that you use. Now, unfortunately, um, the, uh, let me back up a couple here. Of course, it's gonna be slow. Um, the FM gears is only uh, Windows 64. Okay, there we go. Oops, too far. Gear. So I can see here it's only um, a Windows OS. So I'll show this. I'll go ahead and click on it. Windows 64. I'll say download. Um, it's going to ask you to sign in. So I'll sign in with my ID. And then you'll notice it downloads this MSI. So I'll go ahead and click on that. I'll say run. And I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna walk all the way through it, but basically it just installs it. You just say run, and it installs it onto your computer, okay? Then, back in Fusion, what you're gonna wanna do is after it's installed, you'll go into add-ins, scripts and add-ins. Now, we just downloaded an add-in, so I'm gonna go over to this add-ins tab and here you can see all of the different add-ins that I have in my Fusion okay and sure enough there is FM gears so um, if I click on it and now it's already running but let's just go ahead and say stop um, and yours probably will come in not running so I'll click on it and I'll say run and it says the FM gears command has been added to the create panel of the model workspace. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'll go back here, go to the create menu, and here is FM gears. You also see I have you know helical gear. I also have check sketch and stuff like that. But that's how you can add in. Um, different plugins and there is a bunch of really cool plugins so for example let's um, go back one more let's say you do a lot of um, woodworking um, so give me just a second here my uh, internet's being kind of slow I apologize so let's just go woodworking I'll search for that and you can see you know, here's a mortise and tenon, um, a dowel joint, um, you know, map boards pro, all this. I mean, there's a bunch of different options in here. 
so for like cabinet making etc so definitely recommend that you uh, come in and take a look at um, the add-ins and see what's available for you okay so long long winded there um, I create or I loaded an add-in I'll come in here to FM gears and you can see it brings up this dialog now there's spur gear internal gear and rack gear okay now I want to do an internal gear now I saved you guys the the time and figured out what size and number of teeth and all that kind of stuff that needs to happen and I included that in the the drawing so here's the gear data so here's you know the diametral pitch number of teeth gear thickness etc okay so I'll do that FM gears internal gear I'm just using that data so my outer diameter is gonna be 1.5 and you'll see that this is kind of a bogus number um, but we're gonna fix that and as I'm going through you're gonna see some warning messages come up so I'm gonna change my uh, diametral pitch um, let's set that to 38 and sure enough you can see it says the root fillet radius is too large it must be no more than you know 0.015 etc so as I'm going through and changing that you might see some of this happen but that's okay I'll say 34 my root fillet I'm gonna set to 0.01 and now you'll notice that error message went away and then finally the height is um, 0.15 okay so I'll go ahead and say okay and what it's gonna do is it's gonna create that gear for me and you can see it created a component called internal gear and it's just kind of floating out in space now I want to put this inside the part so I'm gonna use the joint command and I'm just gonna grab like this outside edge I'm gonna rotate so we're looking inside the part and I'm gonna just select this edge right here okay and you're gonna see that it puts the gear inside but it also is sticking way outside the part and that's why I was talking about that outer diameter is kind of a bogus diameter but what I really cared about was like you know how many teeth there were where this dashed line was all that kind of stuff and that's what all those numbers were that we typed in so I'm gonna go ahead and say okay and we now have a gear component that's kind of you know sitting inside this other part so what I'm gonna do now is I want to keep what's inside but I don't really care about what's outside so we'll use the combine my target is actually gonna be the gear so I'm gonna click on the gear my tool that I'm going to use is this part four and I don't want to join them together I want to cut okay and you can kind of see what's going to happen here especially if we look from the top we're going to use this part to cut away all the extra stuff that we don't need however I want to make sure that I turn on keep tools because I don't want to lose this tool so I'm going to say keep tools I'll say okay and if we look at the bodies of the internal gear we now have an external and an internal okay and we don't need this external one anymore so I'm going to right mouse click and say remove now I've mentioned this multiple times if I were to say delete things would fail because um, it would delete all of the gear and then it couldn't do the combine and all that kind of stuff but by saying remove I'm basically saying just remove this body out of my design so I'm gonna say remove and you can see sure enough it went away and all that we're left with is that internal gear in there okay and then we'll do another combine this time the target is going to be this main body the tool is going to be this internal gear 
And instead of cutting, I want to join them together. And I don't need to keep the tool this time. In fact, watch what happens to this internal gear. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And you can see the internal gear has no more body. So I can actually right click on that and say remove. And we're now left with this one body of part four. And that those gear teeth are inside of there. Now, is this the best solution? I don't know. It's the one I came up with. Um, it saved me a lot of time. Um, you know, but I did have to do some combined cuts, some combined joins, but I didn't have to draw a complex profile or anything like that. So hopefully this might have you think outside the box and see what you can do with that. Okay, so the, the last thing I want to do is I'm pretty much done with my design. Let's turn on the gear housing. Okay, and I like to do an interference check. So what are the bodies I want to check? I want to check that guy and that guy. And I'll hit this little compute icon. And awesome, it says no interferences detected. So we don't have any clashing or anything like that going on. I could also come in here and do an analysis and you know section through and kind of see what that looks like and sure enough we can see how this part is sitting perfectly in there now again I'm not a plastics guy I'm not worrying about clearance or draft angles or anything like that I'm more showing um, modeling methodologies but I'm kind of showing how you know these parts fit together okay so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on some of these other parts real quick. In fact, I'll just activate this top level. And I'm gonna turn on this basket and you'll notice we have an issue. So we are going to take care of this on our next session. I'm gonna talk about how we can make a, an early design change and uh, how to fix that. So. With that, we're right at the top of the hour. Um, I do have another meeting right after this, so I need to hop off. But I wanted to thank everybody for uh, watching. Hopefully you learned some tips and tricks. Um, again, the drawing and the outline are in the description of the video. Um, I'll go through and look at all the chat and see if there's any questions there. Um, if you have any comments or whatever, please feel free to leave them in the um, the comments of the video. We do go through and read those and, and respond to them if we can. So I want to thank Angelo for being my wingman again and hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and happy fusioning.